Welcome to an example on how to solve a linear first order differential equation using an integrating factor. We're asked to give the integrating factor and the general solution to the given differential equation. The first step is to make sure the given differential equation is in the correct form. The correct form is given by dy dt plus p of t times y equals f of t. So notice how we have dy dt and the next term is a function of t times y where p of t would be equal to negative two divided by t. So it is important when identifying p of t to be careful of the sign. And on the right side, we do have a function of t. So step two is to find the integrating factor, which is mu of t equals e raised to the power of the integral of p of t dt. So in our case, mu of t is equal to e raised to the power of the integral of negative two divided by t dt. This would give us e raised to the power of negative two natural log absolute value of t. We want to simplify this as much as possible. So for the next step, we'll apply the power property of logarithms and move this negative two to the exponent position on the absolute value of t. So this would give us e raised to the power of natural log absolute value of t raised to the power of negative two. This simplifies further because we have base e here and the exponent is log base e, or natural log. And therefore this simplifies very nicely to the absolute value of t raised to the power of negative two, which is equal to one over the absolute value of t squared. And because the exponent is even, we can drop the absolute value and just write this as t raised to the power of negative two. So the integrating factor mu of t is equal to t raised to the power of negative two. Step three, we want to multiply both sides of the differential equation by mu of t and write the given differential equation in this form here. So we'd have t raised to the power of negative two times dy dt minus two divided by t times t raised to the power of negative two times y equals t raised to the power of negative two times t to the third e to the t. Now let's go ahead and simplify this. We have t to the negative two dy dt. Now two over t is the same as two t to the negative one. So this term simplifies to minus two t to the negative three y equals on the right side, t to the negative two times t to the third simplifies to t to the first. So the right side is just t e to the power of t. And now from here on step four, we need to recognize that the left side of this equation this difference here is equal to the derivative of the product of mu of t and y. So this left side is equal to the derivative with respect to t of mu of t and y. Let's go ahead and verify this. To find this derivative, we'd apply the product rule where we'd have the first function, t to the negative two, times the derivative of the second function, which would be the derivative of y with respect to t or dy dt, and then we'd have plus the second function, which is y, times the derivative of the first function. Well, the derivative of t to the negative two with respect to two would be negative two t to the negative three, which verifies this difference is the derivative of this product. So our last step is integrate both sides of this equation and then solve for y. And let's do this on the next slide. So we'd have the integral of the derivative with respect to t of t to the negative two y dt equals the integral of t e to the t dt. So on the left side, the integral and derivative undo each other, and we're just left with t to the negative two y. We would have a constant integration, but we'll also have one on the right side, so we'll only include it on the right. To integrate the right side, though, we do have to use integration by parts where the formula is given here. So we'll let u be equal to t and that means differential v is equal to e to the t dt. So we differentiate to find differential u. du is equal to the derivative of t with respect to t times dt. So we'd have du equals one dt or just dt. And then to find v, we integrate. Well, the integral of e to the t with respect to t is just e to the t. Which means on the right side, we'd have u times v which is t e to the t minus the integral of v du, 
which would just be e to the t dt. So we have t to the negative two y equals t e to the t minus, well the integral of e to the t with respect to t is just e to the t, so we have minus e to the t plus c. So our last step is to solve for y by dividing both sides of the equation by t to the negative two. So simplifying, here we have y or y of t equals, here we have t to the first divided by t to the negative two, so we subtract the exponents. One minus negative two is positive three, so we have t to the three e to the t, and therefore here we have minus t squared e to the t, and we have plus c t squared. Another way to think of simplifying these quotients is to move t to the negative two up to the numerator, which would change the sign of the exponent. So this would be the general solution to the given differential equation. So going back to the first slide, we enter y of t here. So again, we have y of t equals t to the third e to the t minus t squared e to the t plus c t squared. I hope you found this helpful.